Keith Bree in Wiltshire versus the Enterprise Culture Boys in Changing the Village. Nobody in England today seems to like um, a Jack the Lag figure. Nobody likes to think that an entrepreneur has come into the village. People do not like change. Have we got a hammer and a, and a peg? Can we? Can we? Get you a peg. If you can get me a peg, um, because of what I probably did is I moved when um, you were plumbing up. Maybe if I was Lord Kinkham Smythe, that maybe I would be offering them in and maybe they would be offering me out to drinks by now. Maybe it's because I'm just Ken King, Jack the Lad type entrepreneur, that they do not like that aspect of it. I don't know. I've not met them. They haven't met me. They do not know what we are doing here. Robbie, that's probably me at that end, Buster. Yeah. The pe Buster, the peg's in there, so that's right. It's me at that end. Yeah. No, in this way. Well, I take my dog for a walk uh, every day, morning and evening. He's called Max. He's a lovely bearded collie. And uh, I noticed as these walks went along that things were happening there. There was a old barn on the North Drive, uh, which was pulled down and they started laying foundation stones and uh, bricks and things. And I said to them, the workmen there, I said, what, what's how you just redoing the garage here in this barn? They said, yes. Well, as time went by, it was quite clear they weren't doing that. They were building uh, a series of uh, an office on the ground floor and they were obviously going to do something on another floor for which no planning permission had been, uh, had been asked. And then in the rose garden next to the churchyard, uh, bricks were being put down, and then bricks were being put and foundations laid all the way along the path to Avebury. And I realised that something very fundamental was happening here. And uh, th that was when I really first became alerted to it and alerted others to it. Are you finished on that tonight? I reckon that's it? Finished? No. Oh, you got that gable? You it's won't finish that tonight, though, will you? No, I'll finish the book, Tonight? Yeah. Lovely. How are you doing, Duff? All right. All you gratings in on the area. Just one to go in. Lovely. Getting on with it. I'll phone Bill tonight then, shall I? Phone Bill tonight and get him yes. down next week. Yes, by all means. Because his tiles are turned up yeah. today now. Just patience to go on now. Yeah. What we're against is the intrusion of developers. What we're in favour of, we, what we're working for, is the preservation of Avebury as a World Heritage Site and a living village. We're not against individuals, personalities. We're not against changes. After all, Avebury has seen more changes, perhaps, than any village in, in Britain in its 5,000 years. We're not against those, but we do believe that this is not a place for the big enterprise culture, sharp boys, the developers, the property and tourism developers. We feel that um, we've taken them by storm. All of a sudden we've had our juggernauts, our concrete mixers in, we've had our brick lorries, our tile lorries in and everything of this sort of nature and all of a sudden it's good God, what is going on? It's all going too fast. Well to get anywhere in this day and age you've got to act fast, you've got to get on with things and you've got to do it now.
Thanks for coming down again, Martin. Okay. How did your journey go? It wasn't too bad, apart from the rain and the M25. Yeah, a bit messy then, doesn't it? That's right. Um, right. Um, <clears throat> as you know, Ken, we submitted the planning application. Yeah. And they've now come back to me and said they want uh, further drawings to go with what they have already. Over and above what, actually what they've already asked for at the that's last right. big meeting. That's right. right. Yeah. Do you think that's been a bit um, plain funny buggers with us? Well, it's, I think what they are, they're very worried about Avebury Manor being an important site. And they, yeah. in a way, they're putting you through it, I think. Yeah. One of the things I tried to say to them was that uh, how we see the house now in, in its decay and how quiet it is yeah. is very romantic. Yes. But it's to do with decay and dereliction. Exactly. And our ultimate yeah. ruin. It's slipping away, isn't it? That's right. Whereas well, originally, let's yeah. say in the 18th century back to the, to the 16th century, yes. the house would have been bustling with life. Full of it. With um, trades it. going on, with servants and yeah. family. Yeah. It was the important social centre. Yeah. It would have been the hub, isn't it? Things the hub going of the on. village. Things going on That's all right. the time. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is to recreate that atmosphere yes. in an important building. Yes. Again, without destroying its character, but to complement it. No. And I think it's very difficult to get that over to planning authorities who are rather right. rigid yeah. and fundamentally uncreative about yes. their approach to it. I think also the, the press have been a little bit adverse mm. um, because they've said theme park, they've mm. said you know, monorails, and they've said this sort of thing. Going so Walt on. Disney sort of approach. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they try to, right. to, to make out that's the how si to end up. The situation with it is that we, we are recreating the history of this mm. house mm. And, and that's what we've got to get together yes everything yes. that went on here yeah. during the time and the time during mm. uh, the elizabethan mm. reign we mm. want again in the house i think unfortunately that he was labeled with the phrase of developer and therefore was deemed to be untrustworthy in some ways i think that this is a fair judgment to the extent that he seems to me to be inspirational and impatient and that if he makes up his mind that he wants to do something he tends to rush ahead and do it ken was told that if he was restoring a building he didn't need planning permission unfortunately his restoration resulted in the original building falling down and has been much more wholesale than anyone expected, so that he now does require planning permission. Those planning applications went in last week, but Kenneth didn't find them satisfactory and have asked for more information. And we hope they're going to get cleared through the planning committee of Kenneth District Council on the 12th of January. When I actually saw what he was doing, I thought, my God, uh, he's just Bordeaux and everything to pieces and no man could possibly have any love for the place doing this but as I see it gradually falling together I think he's trying to put things back as it was but perhaps the easy way I'm very much in favor with anything to do with uh, the Elizabethan age and I think his figures all dressed in beautiful Elizabethan costumes would be an ad added attraction to the manor and to the visitors and I think it would be very nice. Do you want to check this position? Yes please, Jan, yeah. Stand yeah. how you want him to look. Well, I, what I'd like to do is to, as if he'd just been startled coming into the room. Right, okay. So if I put him up, what we have to do is cut the back of the neck away yeah. and also cut the fibreglass to get him to do that. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this? If we have him yeah. Like that. And obviously we're going to get the startled eyed effect, are we? Yeah, when we get when we get the glass eyes in, yes. you know, yeah. we make him look maybe thorough his brow a bit more. So yeah, as if he's uh, yeah. got an expression on his know, face to who's say coming who's coming through. in. Yeah, who Lovely. Is this? Lovely. The nice thing about it now is the real locals, mm. the, 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 the people who've lived here all their life, yes. are actually with, with me and the scheme. They want to see the house being put back together mm. again. Mm. They've obviously seen it in its heyday and they've seen it slip slide away mm. over the last 20, 30 years. Mm. I got a guy come in yesterday, lovely old boy, local, Frank Fishlock, about 78. He's a, he's a local villager? Yeah, yeah, absolute. I mean, mm. he's been here all his life and he's actually worked mm. in the house and he confirms mm. that he's, let, mm. he's seen it let go, you know? Yes, go downhill. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, he came in yesterday with a petition. I took on the unthankful job of going round seeing what people really uh, thought about it and um, uh, I did these houses round here 
in some places I miss. And uh, when I went round the next day, they said, oh, uh, we're glad you've come. Uh, we've heard all about him. We thought you'd been and uh, missed us out. And they couldn't sign fast enough for him to carry on with the, what he's doing. Because a lot of these people now living in the council houses are young people with young children. And they're thinking of the future of perhaps if Ken can get something going, there'll be work for their children and that. He's not, he's not a middle class in No, no, no. I mean, he, he is actually one of the villagers. Yeah. And he, he stated, he stated to us and the papers, mm. that he doesn't want these so-called blow-ins mm. into the village and telling the villagers what they should do yeah. with their little village. Yeah, what's right and wrong in age. Exactly. You know, they're coming down yeah. here for a year, yeah. he says, yeah. and then he says, they're telling us what to do, where to yeah. walk, yeah. how far to walk, and all yeah. this sort of yeah. We're not having that, he says. I think it's utterly rude for tourists to come and see something like no tourists beyond this sign turning or parking. I think that's very rude. If I saw it in anywhere, I wouldn't stop to even spend a penny there. I think it's a terrible danger of this coming into a sort of class thing, and that would be a very great pity. I don't mind where Ken King comes from or what his background is or, or anything about him at all. What I do object to is his, what I see as his, the commercial exploitation and to a certain degree the vandalism uh, of, of the manor and what he's going to put up in the grounds. Now, he says he's going to restore the manor. Uh, well, that's obviously a very good thing, and the, the manor, I'm informed, has is, is, is got a lot of structural defect to it. If he's going to do that, so much the better. And I don't mind a bit Ken King doing things within reason. But you see, what he's going to do, he's going to falsify history there. He doesn't know anything about history, in my view. And he's uh, been burrowing around. As far as I know, there was no torture dungeons in Avebury at all. I mean, what he's quoted as saying is he's going to put skulls, thumbscrews, shackles, tastefully displayed in a semi-basement. Well, that's got nothing to do with the history of Avebury. But if he does things reasonably and, and with the taste, which in fact he doesn't have, uh, th that's all right. I'm, I'm all for it. The situation with it, obviously, is that the library hasn't been open. The door that we came through from the ante room hasn't yeah. been open for about five years. There's been no heating on in the place for five years. Yeah. So the situation with it is it's been absolutely shut. Yeah. No ventilation, no heating, and that's why it's in such a bloody state as you see it yeah. today. The water is literally running off from some of the bottom shelves. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it'll be a bit of everything, really. But it'll all be, all be leather bindings. They're all leather um, bindings, yeah. yeah. So um, You'll have a few vellum vellum ones as well that's the white ones yes um, any reason for break that it up. um it's just to break it up a bit i mean you're going to have all different colors anyway yeah um lovely you know shame to have all dark ones just it's gonna look really grand a real yeah We're all aware that we formed Avery in Danger a mere one month ago as a voluntary organization to work for the preservation of Avery as a world heritage site and a living rail English village. Now, I think we would all agree that the Avery Manor scheme represents the unattractive face of the enterprise culture. And we are determined to exercise our democratic rights to resist it. That's our aim. Well, he was taking the photographs here. Yeah, black great book he had on. I wish I'd seen it, I'll tell you. Yeah, I got a cheek of bloody nick, I haven't I? Yeah. Anyone else got any thoughts on the best you strategy to adopt? Sorry to interrupt once more, but before we go on to that, um, am I right in thinking that somebody, is it Lord Avebury or somebody who's getting in touch with UNESCO, to, to, to try and uh, get from them a statement? Well, there was a letter. Yes, there's Jane, a letter here. Got it there from uh, Jane Fawcett, who's secretary of ICOMOS, which is the International Com Council on Monuments and Sites. And she has written to The Independent, I think, on Friday. And part of what she says is, as an international organization responsible for advising UNESCO on world heritage sites, we have already made strong representations to Kennett District Council and alerted English Heritage, the Department of the Environment, the National Trust, and the Council for British Archaeology. We trust that the theme park proposal will be thrown out. This is the second scheme involving wholly unacceptable commercialization of Avebury, which we have opposed this year. 
whatever next. You bloody lot couldn't keep up with me, I tell you. We'd lose you, boy. You'd cry. You'd bloody cry. Stop ravaging the in here. Right, more blocks? Yep. What are you doing on? Well, I just want to show you how good our block work is, mate. Look at that. Going to die. Someone comes in and says, I want to, I'm, I've bought the manor, I want to restore it and live there with my family, but I can only do it on a commercial basis, therefore I've got to be allowed to do a bit of commerce in the grounds and so on. That is one approach. The other approach is that he comes in and says this, but in fact spends little on the restoration of the manor and all the money on commercialising the grounds. And I think that is exactly the suspicion we have of what is going on. <coughs> uh, Hugh, uh, as, as you know, in uh, the Thames Down tourist brochure, Ken King has said that he does intend to turn the manor into a theme park. It's, it's in that brochure that uh, Thames Down uh, send out. So he's saying on, on one hand he's not going to make it a theme park, and then he's saying in another document he is. So that's the kind of veracity of the man. That's, that's the sort of reliance you can place on his word. So you'll be earning it tomorrow then, Buster? Have you counted up, Ricky? How much will we owe you this week? No. Lots, I think. Well, we're not going home. Probably it does, does it doesn't matter. No, no. Just end it all next week. As long as you've got a little bit of money. Just charge you over the weekend. Yeah. yeah, so you can get down the pub. Yeah. All right, lovely. Hey, Ricky. I think that the feeling the meeting is one. We ought to write to English Heritage and um, ask them to get stuck into the question of survey of a Grade 1 listed building. Um, secondly, we ought to write to the Kennet District Council now, as just as Richard has said now, uh, giving our arguments, and, and that that letter should, am I right, should urge rejection of the lot. Mm. Failing which, deferral, pending study of new use and intensification of use, mm. and the production of a plan. So we deal with the no. Secretary of State direct on that. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-pronged attack. Early February, the Planning Committee members came round on um, our invitation. They had a look round the grounds the greenhouse, the falconry areas, the craft barn areas, and of course they came into the house and had a look at our little exhibition. They seemed to have had a good day on that day, and that was obviously uh, the preempt to the um, planning for the 9th of February. Ladies and gentlemen, the whole roof is going to come off. The frame of the roof is staying, but these horrid lights in the roof are going. On the back of the building, which you can see from the other side, there are corrugated plastic sheets on the roof and have been for many years. A lot of people state, say that I am ruining the beauty of Avery and its manor. I will be taking them down and I will be putting a stone-clad roof on it. To my mind, what we're doing here is completely opposite what people are stating. Hello, John. John basically is Gillian's younger brother and Janet his, his wife. They have been contracted to come down here to be the estate's managers and this is Janet and John's life, we hope now. We'll have a couple of tea and then we'll start unloading, shall we? They're going to make sure that our cream is fresh, our cakes are fresh, our sandwiches are not hard, our tea and coffee is hot. No escapes now, then. No, we're here, and that is it. This is it. They've got your bedroom right, in there, Richard. We've got the flag up as well, Janet. Yes, yes, it's the uh, anniversary of the accession to the Queen. Queen's accession. So, this is it. That's the day. We've started. We obviously know now that the estates office is not going to be ready and waiting in time, so you're now living in the house. We've sorted out all the Elizabethan players. In fact, they were down here this morning right. when the councillors were down here. And we've had a large meeting with all the councillors this morning. Mm -hmm. And that meeting seemed to go very, very well indeed. Yeah. 
The planners were a bit standoffish in some respects, but the councillors wanted to talk about it. They wanted to come in and see what was going on. So obviously the situation with it is that they are the people who are going to say yes or no. What do you think of the fencing and everything? Oh, you know, it's coming on. You'll be amazed down the bottom. Yeah, it's amazed down the bottom. It doesn't make it look a bit like a ranch. It does a bit, John, but <coughs> we've got to funnel the tourists. Right. I had to cancel the um, flagpoles going up this week because I didn't think that the planners would like that very much. <laughs> so they're going up next Lovely week. Lovely The applications that we've got with the Kennet District Council today are the greenhouse for selling a few of the uh, plants and roses from the herb and rose garden. We've got the estates office and accommodation for the estates manager, two or three blocks of craft barns, we've got the falconry muse and the falconer's kitchen and of course the vintage car shelter for my vintage cars together with the uh, adventure playground which is the uh, wooden stockaded castle effect with all of the play equipment inside, including the equipment for the disabled child. I'm hoping that uh, the majority of them will be passed today. If we don't get any applications today passed, then we're gonna implement our B Road plan of attack, which doesn't require any planning permissions from Kennet District Council at all. It's uh, not what I want, unfortunately, and it's unfortunately not what the Kennet District Council are going to want. But our B road of attack does not need any planning permissions at all whatsoever, and uh, we shall carry on, on along that road. We will be opening on the 24th of March, Good Friday. Mr King advised us that he had been in consultation with his solicitor and his architect and their advice to him had been that he didn't need planning consent for these various buildings and works. We advised him that we didn't agree with him, and as a result of that, he did stop work and submitted the necessary planning applications. The problem is that the committee members made it quite clear today that they regarded this as a flagrant attempt to get round planning control on a site where he couldn't reasonably have expected to get away with such development. Partly as a result of that, and partly because they didn't feel that what he's now built is appropriate, they have decided to refuse all seven of the planning applications he submitted and to take enforcement action to ensure that those are removed. Of course, uh, he will still be able to open the manor house. Uh, he will still be able to use the um, restaurant, which is the Rackets Court, converted into a, a restaurant for which he already has permission, and the Dove Court, which he can use as an information centre. Uh, and, of course, he can also do things inside the manor itself, um, which was not uh, part of the refusal this afternoon. Uh, otherwise, um, I think that's about uh, the end of uh, what Mr King can do. <laughs> Myself and for the Trust, uh, we, we must be very satisfied with this outcome. Avery is a very vulnerable place. With the large number of visitors, we have a delicate balance to keep between preserving the monument in, in, in allowing the largest numbers of people to enjoy the peace and tranquility that exists at the moment. There are a great many things to enjoy at Avery without an element of deliberate entertainment. And I think that that, that that element is what we've seen turned down today. Disaster, complete disaster. Uh, we were very disappointed that in fact we didn't get any of the planning permissions. Um, Plan B will obviously take effect from today onwards. The situation is obviously the Kennet District Council have taken it on their back with their councillors that of course they're trying to put one down on Ken King because of course he's overstepped the mark. As one of the papers said, well, we can't have Jack the Lad about, can we? The situation with it is Jack the Lad's going to be about and he's going to open his Elizabethan experience on Good Friday, which the public will be able to enter. I know that Mr King wants to open the manor house at Easter and obviously he'll want to complete as much as he can of the works that he is allowed to do so that he can open the manor house to as many people as possible. 
because of the amount of work that's already gone on, I would have to assume that he will want to pursue the matter as far as he possibly can and as quickly as possible. To that end, he could, of course, immediately appeal against all the planning refusals, which would set in train the appeals procedure and a possible public inquiry. That will take something of the order of four to five months to arrange from the date when he submits his appeal. So it's unlikely we'll be holding a public inquiry much before the middle to end of the summer. Following on from that appeal, the inspector will make a report to the Secretary of State and ultimately a decision will follow. The craft barns, unfortunately, have been stopped. The enforcement orders on the craft barns and one or two other items have now been placed upon us and the uh, stop notices have in fact been awarded to me as well. The situation with that at the moment is that we are obviously going to appeal on that and if need be we will take that further and go to High Court. However, everybody's turning up, the Elizabethan players are turning up, the Falcons are turning up on Monday, the Elizabethan players are here this afternoon, so it's all gelling together quite nicely. The only one thing that we won't have is the craft market. Well, good morning, Mrs. Jackson. Morning. Nice of you to come along for an interview. And such a charming and bubbly face. Um, one thing I must just say to you, Avery Manor will be opening on March the 24th, as described. And I just wanted to know if you had any sort of feelings, actually, on what you've been reading in the local press. Well, I, to be quite honest, I tend to disregard what, um, anything to do with planning applications that I read in the press in Wiltshire, having lived here for quite a few years and um, that things do get, tend to get blown out of a, all proportion until you actually come and see for yourself, then mm, um, mm. you tend to disregard. You yes. use your own, um, your own sort of um, feelings about places when you go and mm, see them. Mm, mm. Uh, all businesses have a cash flow situation and we need now visitors in our tourist attraction. And that is quite plain and simple about it. Go on. What it would also entail is to wear these lovely costumes here. It really does add to the atmosphere of the Elizabethan experience at, at Avery Manor. The gentlemen will also be in their uh, costume. For example, the car park attendant will be wearing something similar to that. And okay. other uh, gentleman that we'll have working on the, the actual estate or in the grounds. You're used to wearing a uniform, of course. Though. Yeah, yes, I am. They're not quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is all being done at the highest of, of taste possible and, and within keeping of, with Avery Manor and its That's past it. and all the rest of it. So he understands the period, doesn't oh, he? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, he yes. He adores history. Mm. He's a great man. In fact, he, he overwhelms us with it. We, yes, he, he We yeah. can't keep up with it all. Yeah. <laughs> Reading through your application form, you've... Uh, School of Floristry. That's right, yes. Uh, <laughs> so how many years have you been doing that for now? Um, about nine years for floristry and about 15 for flower arranging. I mean, I could always do flowers in the house if you wanted. You know, mm, I could mm. do any of it. Mm. Oh, my, I've got some pictures if you want to see them. <laughs> oh. Yes, sure. Yes, please. Yes, please. Lovely. I think. I haven't said that. I hope I put them in. Like, like that was for a... Oh, how Christmas. charming. How charming. You see that? Oh, lovely. Lovely. Yes. And these ones are, are modern and abstract. Oh, yes, I see. Abstract, yeah. Yeah. It's an art, it's mm, an It is. And, that, and that's a seashore one. <laughs> very good, very good indeed. And that's oh, another weeny weeny one. Oh, lovely. They are very good indeed, and very that good. It's just a basket. Mm. <laughs> That connection down there is a bloody total mess. Well, let's, let, let's push on it first. Go on, did it. Working in this shit as well is absolutely bloody disgusting. That is not the car. I was an interior design consultant for 12 years, Jill. Yeah. That is bright orange. I've got the colour. That is nowhere near the colour. I've got the colour. Let me finish. That is nowhere near the colour that you showed me and that I chose. Nowhere near. I've got the swatch. 
my till sits here. My trays sit here. I take my trays out of here, put them where that the bloody is till is. No, hang on, that place is a tip. We've been trying to carry stuff over holes. I've had arrangements, I've made lorries come down, and we've come down and found trenches dug everywhere. So what you're yesterday, I what you're come saying down to me, I what you are saying to me is because all yes. this water, all bit. this water is in here, then that is my mistake. I came down here yesterday. This to mess spend is the day my mistake. Demonstrating the kitchen to your staff. I find nobody told me the drains that were blocked. This up. mess is my mistake. I'm not saying anything about this mess. First of all, the drains were of not of blocked up. They were being tested I was told by the building the regulation well, officer. Nobody told me that. I can't Have you seen down here, with the disgusting bloody state of the work that has been put in here, the leads, the overflow leads from all three machines are nowhere near long enough. Are they or are they not They're long enough? Short. They're too short. Yes. That's one job. The bloody thing on here is wrong. Every single thing where I look is wrong, for God's sake. And you can see the site, we've had terrible conditions getting uh, cookers and pieces of equipment which are very valuable, which Mr King is paying for. We're trying to get them over a, a, really a building site. We have large holes in the ground, we've had to manhandle stuff. Really like carrying it through trenches almost. Our, our whole lads have done a very good job and they come back every day full of mud, mud and muck and cold. It's really impossible to work here and I feel very proud with the lads that work for me in the company because they've really put in a very good effort and all I've got this morning is slanging and I really feel extremely upset because we are a good reputable company and we have done our best and it will be open on time in spite of everything. The signs have arrived. The A-boards. The A-boards have boards. arrived. Are the light boards up? The light boards have arrived. Are they up? No, they've just arrived just before you got back. The ice cream has arrived. We had a panic trying to get the fridges up and running before we could put it in. The power's been going off about three times every hour. I've had to run up here and switch that back on. I do know how to do that now. If somebody applies for, a, for, for something for town planning and they're unsuccessful, usually what happens then is that the, the person doesn't proceed. They perhaps come back on another tack and try again. And as you all know, not so Mr King. He's just proceeded. Now, the law is framed in such a way that it assumes people are reasonable and law-abiding, so immediately the, the town planning law isn't really structured for this situation. In comparatively recent times, a new weapon has come in called the stop notice, which is rather like the sort of small man's injunction. And stop notices have been issued on Mr King for every notice that arrives, Mr King has to do something about it. He's then in a, a binding legal situation. He must consult with his agents, with his lawyer. He's probably got um, intended times of going to court. He's got to, to pay his staff. He quite probably is going to have to pay a lot of fines. And quite shortly, it's going to be a full-time job. Somebody else is going to have to run Avery Manor just because he's going to be so busy on this front. We still haven't got any litter bins. Home. We haven't Home got litter bins. We'll have to go side. for plastic dustbins. Try and get ten of them yeah. tomorrow morning. Put around well, the place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right, we'll, oh, we've missed it then. We've got no litter bins. Yeah. Unless the two places are going to be open. Saturday. Could well be. That's what really worth a try. Linda has ascertained some nice yeah, wooden ones Friday, up in Blackpool. Really? Yeah. yeah. So but for eight dustbins, it's six hundred pounds. Linda fell off a chair. What we need to do somehow is stop Mr King earning money this year. And it seems to me that the, we ought to urge the local authority to serve an injunction to stop him actually encouraging traffic down his driveway. Because if you stop him earning money, uh, with all the other matters you... Mm. you now, that's his, the sole purpose of all this work is to earn mm. money. Yes. And if he can get two million people through the gates for us weekend, he'd be delighted. Bloody workers, get well, out. They're still here. They're putting what correct that what forward? was wrong, John, Janet. John, may I say that they have, I hope, put some sheets down on that Yes, carpet. I have checked them three times. <coughs> right, who's had me tea or what? It's ba ma main, the main, well, it's main point. Somebody's had me tea or what? It's cardboard, not sheets. Cardboard. It is protected. I have checked it now and again. And I'll give someone a rollicking for putting his boots on the carpet. Some... It sounds as though my range of crockery for the servers is not here either. 
Well, no, that's Jill Cooper. Right, we no, said that. it's not Jill Cooper. King. I know We're she's not, not but yeah, but I haven't Cooper. seen it. We've had some round bowls arrive. Well, that's what I'm after. Well, they're here. The white, the white. Yeah, problem. white round bowls. That's it. That's Two it. packages that's of fine. them. That's fine. That's fine. Yes. French. Yep. Pillybags. Come on, everybody. <laughs> We've got bags of bloody time to do it. Don't put Ken. We, we can get <laughs> on with it. It's only. Sleep. Yeah, we don't have sleep tonight. We don't have sleep. We never sleep last night. That's all right. Get the One day is enough to go without sleep, but two days is a bit much. Be different. <coughs> but if he disregards, if he's not going to put it well, in, what, what happens? Uh, what are right, well, you've got... They'd they take don't... him to court. Yeah, that's right. They'd they take him to court and he would be uh, convicted of ignoring these notices and he would be fined, just like Mr de Savary was fined. If he's got 89 of them, and suppose he was given the maximum fine for each of them, maybe they're not all finable notices, but a good 20 must be, He's in for a very severe hiding. Now, it seems to me that the District Council has thought this through and have decided to apply everything they've got. And I do think now that um, the owner of Avery Manor is, um, is on a disaster course. Generally speaking, the real Avebury person is all for it. It brings life to the manor, life to the village, and also employment. And they're only doing what was here over and over again, really, uh, perhaps in a larger way. Uh, but we have got a few uh, new people in the village, and some have come to live amongst us who just don't seem to want anything. I think they're interested largely archaeological or otherwise there are people who are retired and um, they've got rather set and they don't like this new idea about things <laughs> and they don't really join in much so they've really come here to go to sleep i think <laughs> <laughs> can wake everybody up <laughs> is going to be done, the tidying up of the park's going to be done, yes, yes. so basically in about a month's time it yeah. will be looking much nicer than what it is right. now. And especially yeah. when things start to grow again. Okay. still the winter looking and if that's yeah. No doubt we will have one or two new ideas for the future of Avery Manor, which has got to be an enterprise. It's got to have a bit of an enterprise so that we can actually continue, and we feel that that has got to grow in the next maybe five to ten years. It's going to take that long to get back together because, of course, we have a good 20 to 30 years of rot to sort out. 